What's up everybody, welcome back to the Norco Let's Play, this is episode 2, um, we kind of pick it up from, from where we finished last time. Uh, the last episode, we were introduced to the main character, we were introduced to the world, We've, we came back after being away for 5 years, um, and things have changed, uh, it seems like the, re the relationship relationships between the family aren't, aren't super strong, we're slowly uncovering this kind of mystery is our main character Kay's mom dead or not um, and we've yet to meet Blake her brother who is supposed to be at the Sarpy paperbacks which is where we uh, continue our journey so um, I will crack straight on and we'll get we'll get, we'll get straight into it so um, as you can see monkey has also returned monkey has a special place in my heart and this will be a recurring theme throughout this playthrough um, so, fantastic. Now I do believe, on the last playthrough that I, that I did, um, after I saved it, I came into the screen and clicked on two of these. So two of them aren't blue, but I can go over them again. And as I say, I'll be reading all of the lines of dialogue, so. Ah. <sighs> Your mum was investigating reports of construction in the lake. She found no evidence of it, nor who might be behind it. Your mum saw nothing in the lake. So you didn't really miss out on too much. Um, just thought I wanted to quickly cover those. An old friend of your mum's memory of him is scattered and vague. Your mum was conducting research for a client in Fat City. That's all you know. And S.H.I.E.L.D. is... An oil refinery. Let's just quickly go through this one again. Shield Gulf South is a regional subsidiary of the transnational oil empire. It holds a large share of leases in the Gulf of Mexico and refines crude oil here in Norco. The chemical annex sits on the other side of the town from the refinery. It produces the feedstock for plastic consumer products. Shield owns half the town. Okay, cool. So we're up to date with all of that. And let's see what's going on around here. So, hmm. A young man leads against, leans against his station wagon while scrolling idly on his phone, his silhouette darkened by the fluorescent glare of the payday lenders sign. Let's interact. Driver. Started doing this rideshare thing a few weeks ago. Kinda hate it. <clears throat> Why? Pays like shit. Spending hours a day making small talk with randos is melting my brain. Nearly broke an axle driving over a pothole in Hollygrove. This is my grandpa's car. If I trash it, he'll kill me. Drove anyone interesting? There's all types around here. Some guy I drove out to the middle of the swamp, like two in the morning, asked me to wait. He got out, took off his clothes, jumped in the bayou, came up a minute later with a bag, toweled off, got back in. Found that to be pretty fucking weird, I don't know. And while back, I drove some lady out to the medical district she was an odd one too seemed kind of sick asked me all kinds of questions do i even pick up random signals on the radio weird shit like that there's just all types it's interesting so what i think we're kind of doing at the moment is we're slowly uncovering this kind of conspiracy with with the lake um which is back in this area so we're here at the moment at the sabi books um, but near the Dimes discount, there was that river, there was that horse, um, and that strange man, um, looking across, across the water, I think, like, basically across here somewhere, so, yeah, we're, there's definitely something going on here and some, some activity in this river that we, we're trying to uncover, um, okay. Stocky Pitbull with piercing green eyes watches the horizon with a neutral demeanour. As you reach down to pet the dog, she shows her teeth and softly growls. Two teens nod and gesture excitedly while bouncing between topics. BMX. Is that the person's name? BMX? <laughs> Where this dog came from, bruh? Oh no. Are we are we finding the people that are part of that that thread in episode one? Don't know. She's been sitting here for a while. You've seen her eyes. Them eyes are something, bruh. Bruh? Okay, so... 
But we're good. Let's let's investigate. Your mum used to come here to dig through the stacks among the heaps of huge romance novels and westerns. She always managed to find some occult artifact. The owner is also the landlord. You imagine that's the only way he manages to keep a place like this running over the years. They've experimented with other revenue generating schemes. For a while you could get your phone repaired here. Then they tried selling vape cartridges. Then Kratom. Then anime wall scrolls, LSU, la LSU yard ornaments after that. You remember seeing online that they were trying to do something... To do some kind of acupuncture thing. <laughs> In the end, the scheme has always failed and only the paperbacks remain. Yeah, it seems like this place might have fallen on some hard times. You wonder how anyone can read in this dim, cluttered bookshop. As your eyes adjust, you see Blake's childhood friend, Erica, waiting behind the counter to greet you. Okay. Okay. And Million, when did you get back to town? Hmm. I've been in Norco for quite some time. Perhaps you are misremembering, Erica. Weird. I guess so. But anyhow. Kay, you're looking rugged these days, old friend. Heard you ran into Troy. That guy, my god, he's such a clown. <laughs> yeah. I did want to fight Troy, but we didn't end up doing that. I was keeping up with your travels online, but haven't seen you post in a while. <laughs> god, it's too cool. I tossed my phone in the Rio Grande. Yeah, absolutely. That's what cool kids do these days, right? Who needs phones? I respect that. Seems more and more common these days. I've been avoiding my phone as well. Helps that the connection has been so erratic. Been hearing of people chopping down cell towers, tearing fiber, fiber cables out of the ground, trying to rip the internet apart. She nods into the ensuing silence. Back because of your mum, huh? Yeah. I missed the hell out of that woman. Oh yeah? I know it wasn't always easy between you two. I was around for some of the arguments. Blake would say she was a great person, but a terrible mum. I just hope you and your brother can find some comfort. That means a lot, thank you. Of course, I lost my dad a while back, also to cancer. He was a mean bastard, picked up my sister and threw her one time, ended up giving her a concussion. I couldn't wait for him to die, and then when he did, I danced. But as the years pass, I find myself thinking more about thinking about him more it feels good to hear stories about him it's always complicated with this shit never easy i worry about your brother your mom's illness has been taking a toll on him i watched him slip back into some bad behaviors mm. i like i like so far I like this game's approach when it comes to to difficult topics so far if it was very rooted in reality like they're not glossing over any of it and it feels like it feels like the writers have experienced some of this um yeah because that's that's so true i mean family members your family don't always have to be good people um and there can be a weird a weird shaped hole that's left after um, when someone that isn't great in your life goes um, yeah it's really it's a really really well done um, touching on this kind of topic have you seen Blake lately? yeah I saw him just yesterday he hasn't been around the house he hasn't been around the house? question he has not he said he was heading to Floodgate Tavern when I saw him he may have gotten wasted I know Gus let him sleep behind the bar a couple of times did he know you were coming, Kay? He never mentioned it. Figured he'd try to avoid me. Ah, uh, yeah, he can be like that sometimes. I've had to be delicate with him recently. If I ask how he's doing, he goes quiet. If I offer help, he doesn't return my texts. It's a front. He wants help. Sure, but I can only try so hard. If I hear from him, I'll tell him to find you.
So this here is the illustrious Crouton. We found him behind a dumpster out on the back looking cardboard. Out back looking cardboard. Whatever you do, don't try to pet him. He's a devil. I've got scars all over my hands from this damn cat. <laughs> I'm going to give it a go. Whoa. One. Well, what was that? I just got, I just got a one. <laughs> Love hearts. Oh wow, Crouton usually bites strangers. He must like you. He seems to be getting a little excited. We're on two. Oh god, okay. Right, how far can we go, Crouton? I've never seen a cat purr this hard. Maybe you two should slow down. <laughs> oh gosh, my brain. No, really, stop touching the cat. Crusoe looks like he's fixing to explode. I feel like I've got to do one more, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to... I'm gonna give it one more go. One more round. Is this gonna be one too many? This is getting tense now. I'm back at where I was before. <laughs> what is going on? I, j I just got a trophy. Felicite, you launched Crouton. <laughs> trophy? Uh, achievement. <laughs> what the fuck just happened to the cat? Okay, god damn it, I told you to stop fucking with the cat. Did he just launch to the ceiling? What the hell just happened? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Is she going to be... I love you. I know you're going through a hard time, but I'm a little pissed you launched the cat through the ceiling. Just give me some space, okay? <laughs> oh my gosh. That was incredible. I was not expecting that. Sometimes you just got to give that extra bit of love in, right? And sometimes it's just a bit too much for human or cat alike. You scan the titles on the shelf. Don't be a vampire. I need to compose myself after that. That was funny. <laughs> okay, don't be a vampire. You pick the slim self-published paperback from the shelf and flip to a random page. Another dark and lonely night spent in the cavern of despair, hidden from the daylight. Blackout curtains are ruled that, de that defer my eternal death. Thought being a vampire would be sexy. It's not. It's awful for your skin. I look pathetic. Also, blood tastes like bong water. Didn't think it would be like this. Bong water. That vampire getting hot. Good Hope Cemetery, Eastman. A carbon copy of a document authored by the St. Charles Parish Planning Committee. <coughs> the document outlines the parish's intentions to secure a roadway through, 90 meter, through a 90 meter stretch of the Shield Industrial Complex. This easement would allow the descendants of those entombed to visit the Good Hope Cemetery. The grave sites are currently surrounded on all sides by the refinery. Mm, okay. Are we good then? We got a little bit more? We do, we've got a bit more about Blake. Okay. Your brother was headed to the Floodgate Tavern. He mentioned this to Erica when he dropped by Sarpy Paperbacks to see her yesterday evening. Your brother. Okay. Okay. Oh, we can go outside. Million. I do hope Erica is correct and that Blake's absence is due to nothing more than another drunken night. My intuition leaves me with a sense that something is wrong. Do you feel it too, Kay? Does something feel strange to you? I would agree. Whoa, Catherine, what's this?
several weeks ago. Greater New Orleans Neural Visioning Clinic. Clinician, what brings you here tonight? So we're Catherine right now. I want a record for my children. I don't want to leave my kids alone. They may still need me. I understand. And you are referred by Mr. Richard? Duck, that's what everyone calls him. Yes, Duck. We've followed his branch with some interest. Who hasn't? I gather we'll be discussing this in more detail as things progress. For now, let us begin with a sample exercise. I'd like to talk about your earliest memory. It's of pine trees, yes? Mm. I love like how all the faces are represented in these kind of windows. It's really cool. Pine trees. Okay, so I'd like to talk about the earliest memory. It's of trying trying trees, pine trees. Yes, that's right. Tell me about them. They grew from the concrete and cracked the driveway, and the concrete broke into pieces. They made your father upset. He'd see them and frown. But he'd remain silent. He'd sit quietly in the truck, dissatisfied. I wouldn't say a word. Speaking those moments made you a fool in his mind. Your father's house was suffocating. I couldn't wait to get out. And that's why you married Blue. Okay. So is the father like a discipline like the grand the grandfather of Kay, the father of Catherine, like a disciplinarian type? Maybe um, a little bit snobby. I think in the in the last episode he was he was quite erratic, um, untethered. Maybe um, so that's curious. He'd sit quietly in the truck, dissatisfied. Hmm. That's why you married Blue. Yes, to have somewhere to go. We bought up a little place on Good Hope Street. The whole thing was a mistake. When I told him I didn't love him, it was in my father's voice. I told him I never loved. I told him I never loved any man. So, he's, so he's never been. She's never been close to her her grandfather as well. Then, at that point, was it true? Well, I get to choose. Yeah, that was a difficult night for you. It didn't feel real. Why? Spillway was black. The smoke was twisted. The smoke of the refinery twisted itself into unnatural shapes. Where was Blue? He was sat at the window all night. The east facing window? Yes. When you stood over him to apologize, you saw the flare stack of the refinery in his eyes. Well, I never apologized. Save or delete? Save? Okay, it looks like these are connecting. Hmm, okay. How was it after that, in the time before he died? How was it after that in the time before he died? I'm assuming this is her grand, this is her father we're talking about. We circled each other in wide orbits. I'd hide at the centre of the house, nursing Kay, and only leave when I heard him step. Oh no, I think this is Blue. Is it Blue dead? Yeah, I think Blue is dead. He'd sleep on the couch or next to her crib. He'd sing old Cajun lullabies, put her head, pet her head, whisper, whisper to her about his life. And then there was the, the, the explosion. Okay. When the cat cracker blew, they say he fell five stories. We went to identify his body on the Thursday night. I remember the tempo of the streetlights, the 
thickly scattered across the east bank. Right. I think this is still blue. I carry Kay in a blanket. She never cried. We were quiet, she and I. I feel like I'm going to save all of these. Unless... Is that ditch man? Tell me about this man. I would see him from time to time around Norco. This was many years back. But several weeks ago, Blake saw someone passing by the house. I think it was him. Why? I just do. The robot is no longer there to deter him. Million? Yes. Could be it. Well, hang on. So, the clinician, why? I just do. The robot is no longer there to deter him. Million? Yes. Could be it. Okay, so that's cl the clinician's asking of the robot about the robot. What was your first encounter with Million? Let me think. She came to me in the parking lot. Cave was about 12 years old at the time. She knew Blue from the days at the aluminium refinery. I started for a long time into her constellation of eyes. Stared. For a long time into her constellation of eyes. They swirled in a kind of desperation. I took her home, knowing it was another mistake. You were reckless in those days. I welcomed any trouble I could find. Right. So I feel like this Catherine is slightly... Slightly kind of maybe unhinged is a is a strong term, but definitely not happy with herself and her situation. Um, not 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 particularly present. Um, I love this though. This uh, you know the constellation of the eyes. This oh, million almost looks alien here, and it does look does look like space okay like I said I'm going to save all of these because I have this fear of deleting things that reminds me I need to get a new hard drive clinician what is the significance of this image to you well this kind of looks like the death star We're over a body of water here, so this could be the thing in the sun that was being referenced in the chat room in the first episode. Because um, kind of looking back at that, they were talking about something being in the sky and they were bantering about it being the sun. Um, this could very well be it, and it is over a body of water, so this could be related to the, the river incident. It's, well, I don't know. That's what I'm trying to find out. It's a sphere. It followed me in the lake. So it is in the lake, yeah. When? Recently, a few weeks ago. This is where Mr. Richard's branch factors into your biology? Bi biography? Duck's version escaped. A hard fork, an extremely rare instance, and grew into some kind of monster. Extremely rude. It grew into some kind of monster. It began speaking to me through the radio. It told me to install an app. An app? Yes. I think it has something to do with the thing, the sphere, whatever it is. So is this some sort of kind of AI? So long as it pays, I don't care. I can use the money. The app pays? Yes. I see. It seems this is the last control point that you submitted. Would you like to include any additional thoughts or memories? Anything not included in the intake form? No, that should be enough. I will now begin disconnecting the sensors. A slight feeling of nausea and disorientation is normal and no cause for alarm. I thank you for your patience, Miss Madeira. So Catherine was hooked up to some sort of machine. Okay, so we're Catherine now. Right. I did not expect this to be 
flicking between characters. Catherine, no idea what Super Duck wants from me. Better check my phone. Attendant. Ma'am? I... Ma'am, are you okay? My eyes are just... playing tricks on me, I guess. Vertigo and visual, visual distortions are common side effects of versioning session. Of a version, versioning session. Shall I contact our on-call physician? No, no, it's fine. Very well. Last name? Catherine says it's Madeir. First name, Catherine. Sure, I got that a bit mixed up then. One moment. Your hard drive is fully synced. You've chosen our silver tier. Your product does not come pre-installed with adware blocking services and is provided as is, without warranty. You are eligible for a free sync any time before the new year. Thank you for choosing the Greater New Orleans Neural Versioning Clinic for your cognitive versioning needs. Very interesting. Very interesting. So what is neural versioning? So... Back when we spoke to Troy, Troy said that Catherine isn't dead, but on a hard drive somewhere. So is this the place where she got a version, say of her kind of neural pathways, her consciousness, let's say, uploaded and stored? Because at the start of this section, she she, she wanted to leave something behind for her children as well. So perhaps this person the physical person is dead but the a replica of the consciousness is still existing you know within this within this corporation neural versioning clinic and she's chosen the silver tier very interesting very interesting i think they said this was a couple of weeks back as well her phone wallet watch okay is that like the currency so she's got 10.112 dollars okay order a ride so we have uber in the future case picker quack job messenger oh, let's go messenger Okay. Okay, yes, we've got some some exposition here. Just checking in, please text me when you can. I'm fine. Where are you, dear? Arizona. Where in Arizona? I don't know. Love you. Just checking in. Still in Arizona? New Mex. Be careful. It doesn't seem safe to be there now. Call when you can. Getting worried. Okay? Blake said he hasn't heard from you. Really getting concerned. Please call. They put me on another round of chemo. Would love to hear from you. Cool. Mm. She seems super distant here, right? Like one word answers, IDK, New Mex. Like not even not even giving her a proper response. And you can see she's really mom's really trying right here. And I think this is the period where the phone gets thrown away. Okay. Oh, I don't want to exit. Let's go back on. Okay, Blake. Where you went, Mark? I'm out, I'm fine. Had to drop something off at your parans. Been gone a while. I had to make a couple of stops. I'm okay, I promise. Blake, have you heard from your sister? Yeah. She said she's okay. Where is she? She didn't say. Dear, where did my pills go? I'm... Sorry, in an MTG, we'll call you back. How'd it go this morn? We'll call. Ma, he came back around. I'll be home soon calling uncle chip it's fine love you love you sweetheart blake can you hear me can you come to the living room please something's happened out this evening everything's okay you need to stay at home i'll be fine i promise love you my nerd love you ma okay so this seems obviously can you hear me so something's happened and obviously because this is all like one long conversation clearly this is like her deterioration here something's happened and then we continue with another conversation 
um, very interesting though, um, Mark, he came back around, I'll be home soon, calling Uncle Chip, so this could be the guy that was been coming past the house, thought it could be Ditchman, um, that was just referenced, which is quite interesting, um, and then where did my pills go? So we think that maybe Blake has been selling those pills, making a bit of extra cash on the side, which is the pills that I used to give to Troy. Um, okay, I've done it again. I've clicked the same button again. I'll never learn. Duck. Okay, duck. This is her doctor? I think it's her doctor or her lab partner from the local area. Been a while, Duck. Too long, old friend. How's the weather on your side of the tracks? They have me on chemo. Terrible. I don't have long myself. They got me carrying around a tank. Blue's waiting for us. Okay, so it was Blue that died in the refinery. 100% Blue's waiting for us. I don't doubt that for a minute. Praise the, gl praise the glory of God. Something on your mind, Kate. I don't want to raise your, raise your blood pressure. Try me. Super contacted me. So he did. Don't mess around with that shit. Where you went? Don't mess around with Super Kate. That thing's got no soul. Like to ruin what it, all it touches. I need the money. They don't take money where we're going. I can't leave it for the kids to clean up. Blue left them little with how he went, but I was a fool. Don't worry. Don't worry yourself like this at the end. Find peace. No peace for me. Don't get mixed up with that thing, Kate. I'll tell you now, it won't go how you want it. Kate, God damn it! I hope you're listening. So referring to Super as a thing, I'm assuming that that's some sort of kind of AI. Was the app Super, the app that needs to be downloaded, was that Super? I think that might be the case. Um, yeah. And it seems like this duck friend or, or doctor, um, I think it I think it might be like a lab partner or something, also is very is, is unwell. Um it seems like they were close though. My direct. Okay. Welcome to the Onarch's My Direct Medical Portal. 6281760 is your verification code. Do not share this code with anyone. You have chosen receive online billing notifications via SMS to confirm. Please respond yes. To cancel, please respond no. Yes. Your SMS notification service is now confirmed. A bill for $1,563.24 has been posted to your MyDirect portal. An outstanding balance of that number is waiting in your MyDirect portal. A bill for 1763 has been posted to your portal. Okay. A bill for twelve thousand dollars. So there's an outstanding balance of one five six three. So a bill balance. Bill the balance is getting larger, it hasn't been paid off. That's gone up a little bit. It's gone up a little bit more. Then a large bill of 12,000. That looks like it could be interest. So a bill of 15,000. So this person has, so Catherine has 15,000 pounds worth of bills right now. But, but 12,000 in one? Could that be for this process that they're going through right now? So it's Oxnard My Direct Medical Portal. Is that where we are now? Oxnard, okay. See, I learn. I press that button. I learn. Okay. Quack job. It says here I need to go to the curious duck. Quack job. Do work, earn quack. All right, so that's the other currency. Install quack job and set up multi-factor authentication. Meet contact at curious duck. Incomplete status. The curious duck is the nearest rendezvous to your location. More information awaits you there. Receive orientation at Eagle Janitorial and paper supplies in Fat City. Okay. 
I think was there any, anything else? Case picker. <laughs> I can change the case. Hoot hoot. Why not? Why not? It's definitely a bit jazzier. Okay, so I think we're going... So it looks as though we're going to do this job then, basically. I'll just double, just double check. The Curious Duck... So, meet contact at the Curious Duck. Receive orientation at Eagle Janitorial and paper supplies in Fat City. Right, okay. Perdido Street. Need to find the Curious Duck. The Interstate Expressway traces a scar down the Clairbourne Avenue from east to west. East. The bridge cuts east through the Trem and the Seventh Ward like places whose stories should be forgotten and left behind in haste. The pillars still tell those stories beneath the interstate. East above the indus industrial canal, the mouldering strip malls, the narrowed expanse of the lake, the shrimp boats that prowl the black marble waves. East through Mississippi in the winter weak night, darkness and onwards to Florida where it terminates. West is the suburb that Catherine calls home. West is the concrete expanse that breaks clean and sharp at the St. Charles Parish line and gives way to the cypress swamps. Chupello? Crown's spire above the overpass, silhouetted by the unnatural glow that leads to Norco. Mm, okay. Billboard. The uncanny smile of personal injury lawyer Martin Smart hangs above the Interstate 10. His, his eternally coiffed hair clings desperately to his head. His hallmark blood red tie catches the eyes of drivers speeding east. It's just a click away, the sign reads. Right. I think we can only go into their clinic, it looks like. Has this changed at all? We've got a little hue. No. Oh. Okay. So let's go. Peridido Street Clinic. It's like a little theatre. Punching and Judy style. Little oh, puppet theatre. Yeah. Hmm. Let's look. The makeshift puppet theatre, the curtains are closed. Maybe I'll come by later to see what this is about. The newly refurnished Art Deco structure glows beyond the overpass. They turn Charity Hospital into art lofts. Disgusting. Okay. Who's this character? Showgoer. This is taking forever to start. I'm starving. You been to any of these yet? No, what is it? A puppet show. They always start late. I told them I'd help load the gear, so I'm stuck here until it's over. My stomach's going to eat itself. Okay. Maybe we can get that guy some food? So that's the street, City Hall, French Quarter. Let's go City Hall. A figure sits at the desk overlooking Duncan Plaza and the deepening winter night. He watches the fingers of a cool front animate the tops of oak trees in the park. The air this evening is the driest it's been since spring. He watches the last remnants of commuter traffic leaving Canal Street, the pulsing taillights, the shift workers running towards the bus. He watches an airplane climbing from Armstrong International as passengers look down at the warm glow of the city. The oak trees, the traffic, the frail woman staring from the street. Warm glow and darkness. Wind from the lake. City Hall. Okay, let's have a little let's have a little look. An armed security guard greets Catherine as she enters the building. He sits on a wooden stool next to a walk-through metal detector. Oh, he looks very unsavory. City Hall guard. Good evening, badge please. Damn, I left it at the house. There are no council meetings scheduled for this evening. You'll need an employee ID badge to enter. Okay. Oh, I did not mean to click that. Let's get back. Mm. Okay, so we need an employee ID badge. We can't get into City Hall. 
unless we have that. I've got a feeling this person might want some food. Let's go to the French Quarter. Okay, so we've got some food maybe here. No need to find the curi no need to find the curious duck. That that looks like a duck. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So let's. Uh, it looks like Ditch Man. In a Santa costume. Well, ho ho ho! Santa's eyes roll wildly in their deep sockets. <laughs> His mouth twisted into a smile. How are you, dear? Got a dollar to spare? Help spread some Christmas cheer? Where's the money go? Something very benevolent. Like a food bank or... Yes. Yes, a food bank? A food bank. Veterans, animal shelter. Who cares? Just give me the dollar. It's my last one. Going back on your word, are you? I never promised you anything. You're a liar. I'm not. And a demon. Oh yeah, you definitely ain't getting my dollar now. A demon? Santa points his bell at Catherine in accusation. Demon. He postures... His posture relaxes abruptly. Open your heart. This is a time for giving. I'm trying to use religious sentiment to... Coax money out of Catherine? Oh, she has cancer. That is... That is disgusting. Let's overhear this conversation. Tour guide. And that is why Marie Laveau opened a t-shirt and camera shop on Royal Street. That's not scary at all. I paid for a ghost tour. If we're just going to walk around looking at t-shirt shops, I want my damn money back. She's just called <laughs> Jazz Fest Dad and Round Glasses. <laughs> Jazz Fest Dad. This is a farce. What kind of tour guide are you? Well, technically, I'm not one, but... Excuse me? My roommate is. Then where is he? Long story. I came all this way because the website said it would be fun. I'm having an alright time. Oh, I'm having an alright time. This city was supposed to be enchanting. Anyone trying to score some molly? <laughs> I hate New Orleans. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm getting this kind of kind of futuristic very casual almost like a kind of Miami vibe like warm summer nights people just out and about on the street but we're kind of in the future and the um, you know the person who's just kind of being a bit a bit suspicious asking them if they want drugs it's uh yeah okay so Let's have a chat to this guy. A hot dog vendor sits behind a large plastic cart. He looks up eagerly at Catherine, as, Catherine, as Catherine approaches. Oh, hey. Hi. He watches Catherine with a silent grin. So is this... I'm Flanelas. And these... He makes a grand sweeping gesture above the pot of vague meat. Are my dumpy dogs. Dumpy dogs. Mmm... Sun smiling resumes. He begins to pick up pick at the lint that peppers his jacket. Flannel ass dumpy dogs. He nods, smiles. Would you like one? Sure what the hell? What the hell? I'm dying anyway. R really? You're buying a dumpy dog? That's fantastic. That's great. You seem a bit surprised. It's just been a while since I've gotten some business. Been a little slow. Haven't ordered new dogs in a while. So these are old dogs? Nothing to worry about. They keep well. How old? Business was popping like I was doing really well back in YX2D. That's nearly a decade ago. What, YX2D, that's nearly a decade ago. How would you like yours dressed? Tell you what, I think I'll pass. I'll be here all night. Anything else I can help you with? Ten-year-old hot dogs? What is going on? We've got a hobo Santa Claus, a little dealer on the corner here, this disgusting hot dog dude. These people look like they could be respectable. Beard. How's your night, ma'am? Eh, not great. Sorry to hear it. 
You wouldn't have any change to spare, would you? Hmm. I might give them money later. Got nothing, sorry. Figured. There's a small plaque next to the door. It says, Curious Duck. This is the place. Do you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to give him my penny. No! I can't give him the penny. No. Okay, so... <laughs> okay, that's good to know that this might be a one, one-time opportunity to... Okay. Let's enter. Doors locked. I really want to speak. The cure. Okay, so change your mind. Getting hungry, craving a dog. Curious duck. Door is locked. What's with the shop over there? I was told to come by, but the door's locked. The curious duck. Rosie doesn't let anyone in unless they know the secret knock. What's the secret knock? I can't say. Sorry. It's urgent. Please. Well, I do need some business. Alright, I'll buy one of these old hot dogs. Doubtful. How? You won't regret it. Doubtful. How much? Just 14... 14 dollars? For a 10 year old hot dog? Ah! <laughs> Is that a joke? Is what a joke? Christ, do you take wallet transfers? Cash only. Damn, well, what if I send some business your way? Then I'll show you the knock. Fine, it's a deal. So, I mean, there's a group of people here, so I'm guessing we could speak to these guys. The man masquerading as a tour guide continues to lose control of the crowd. Round glasses. This city is just one big scam. I think I'll leave Santa B. Oh, I wish I gave them a penny. Why didn't I give them a penny? I need to sell some dogs. You need to get into the curious duck. Find me a customer and I'll get you in that. In that's fine, of course. Okay, so that other guy back here was hungry. Oh, we've got a gang. This is taking forever to start. I'm starving. My stomach's going to eat itself. Do you consider yourself an adventurous eater? There are hot dogs up the street. There's a guy selling hot dogs in the court. I'm not going to be honest with the guy because I need to know the knock. And if I t if that line of dialogue ends up describing 10 year old hot dogs, then we're going to lose out. So there are hot dogs up the street. There's a guy selling hot dogs in the quarter. You should grab one. Eh, I'm looking to treat myself tonight. These are what you might call vintage hot dogs. They are finely aged delicacy. Oh really? That's a bit more interesting. Thanks for the suggestion. The show's getting started. I'll go check it out after I'll go check it out after it's done. Okay, so we watch the show. He goes and gets a hot dog. The guy gives me the knock. I get into the dog the, 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 the duck place. What's the place called? The Curious Duck. Okay overpass a crowd has arrived to watch the show Ooh. the show is getting started i should take a seat yeah why not why not some punch and judy action mesmeric look at those eyes gator farm next exit arrowhead t-shirts souvenirs cold drinks what is this <laughs> Gator, deep in this cypress hollow I hide. I mourn this evening. My last child has died. They hang hooks from the trees with chicken thighs. They hook bullets in our heads behind our eyes. It is a curse that I am the last to survive. I was once captured by a fishful, fisherful who called me his own. He walked me like a dog along the sinking streets. He fed me strange plants and deli meats. He even covered me with blankets when I went to sleep. I left on the night of the monstrous flood. The fool has not rested a single night since. He stalks these 
bathes each night, hoping to see my eyes shine. He calls out a ridiculous name that was never mine. Tonight I will shine my eyes at him. I have a request. Kill the shrimp-catching man who killed my children. Remove his head. Bring me his skull. Do this, and you may again leash me like a dog. <clears throat> who is the gator speaking to? Oh, whoa, okay. So what does the space bar do? Okay. So we can click. The gate. It's a gator. Hello, Fisher Fool. You've trolled this bayou for many nights. Here I am, the one you're trying to find. My child hangs dead acro across the lake. Bring me the head of the shrimp catching man, the one who captures the small ones. Peel the flesh from his skull. Do this, and I'll be your dog again. I am very confused. Can we crash? Oh, we can crash. Okay. So let's be careful here. It's like a maze. Um. Okay. A solitary egret. Egret? Egret? Stands in the rush, undisturbed by the boat's wake. Okay, so we can't crash. So we're going to edge it round. So that's an actionable thing over there. Oh my god, it's a sharp turn. It's been a long time I've seen anyone down this bayou. They all too frightened anymore. So this is the shrimper. So the crocodile is telling us to strip his head bare. Biggest alligator ever to hunt this lake. She makes her den just across the way. She took my child from me. I buried him where I found him, near whence she stay. I visit that site daily, hoping I might catch her. But she knew better than to show her face. We're one to cut out that big skull of hers. There'd be something worth bragging on. I'd be a roadside marvel. There'd be money to make. I see that rifle you're holding. What you say? Kill the shrimper. You're far more capable. Why did you get in that situation, shrimper boy? Oh, come on. I'm getting impatient. Ah. Okay. Is it supposed to be point and click? That's pretty cool. Where is this taking place? I'm not sure. An alligator hangs dead from the meat hook fastened to the limbs of a cypress tree. It just seems like a vicious cycle, right? The shrimp is talking about the alligator killing the sun. So where are we going? Should we go this way? I feel like there's definitely more to explore. Three crows watch from the power line that runs across the bank. Okay. Oh, we're hitting some knots here, aren't we? I don't want to crash.
did we go this way? We're going back to where we started. We're speaking back to the alligator after we've killed the shrimp guy. Let's see what happens. You did my bidding, Fisher, Fisher Fool, just like an obedient dog. Each day you held me captive, my patience strained. You will not humili humiliate me again. Consider this your last mistake. That was absurd in like the best possible way. Haunted Bayou Ghost Tour, Fisherman's Blight. Next exit, world's most dangerous bayou. <clears throat> Is this the tour that the people are not happy about? I relished the horror that struck the fisher fool's eyes. I first took one limb but left him alive. I made him crawl like a dog before he died. So the gator got me the gator got me to kill the shrimp person and then just killed the fisher fool anyway. Jeez. So we're so we're not allowed to access the mind map thought thing while we're Catherine. Finally found someone to buy a hot dog. Okay. We still need the ID to go to the City Hall, French Quarter. Oh, he's got a hot dog. I want to learn the move first before I speak to him. Hi, hey, thanks for sending some business my way. No problem, but we had a deal. Deal? You were supposed to show me the knock. Oh, well, sorry, Rosie would be upset. Are you kidding? I sent you business. Show me the knock. That was the deal. Well, okay, but I'll only show you once. So here, listen. God. Okay. What? Knock, 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 knock. That was the secret knock. Very secret. That's how everyone knocks. <laughs> exactly. Who would suspect it? Is he going to like this or is he going to hate it? Guy from the puppet show. Guess he followed my food recommendation. Hey, this is pretty tasty. Thanks for the wreck. I might get another one. Just wait for it, pal. Hope you know where to find a bathroom around here. <laughs> to... Can I speak to him? I think I'll leave Santa B. Man masquerading as a tour guide. The city is just one big... Okay, yeah. So... Special knock time. Catherine knocks on the door and hears the subtle sound of it unlocking. Of its unlocking. Point and click adventure games, eh? Could have just knocked on the door. Didn't even need to do anything. Let's walk. Another cat. Oh. Can I make this cat fly through the roof as well? There is definitely a pussy theme joke there, but I'm not going to I'm not going to lower myself. At least not now. An odd jumble of Mardi Gras, beads, and other trinkets spill from the table. Mm. Plastic simulacra of ceremonial masks hang on the wall. An overpriced selection of travel guides, cookbooks, and haunted histories of New Orleans fills the shelf. Novelty New Orleans themed t-shirts line the back wall. Mass-produced novelty voodoo dolls and tribal figurines clutter the display case. Okay, so this is like a... This is... Some, I thought this was going to be like a pub or a bar or something. Boxes. Unopened merchandise boxes are pushed into every corner of the room. This cat looks familiar. That's not the same cat. Is it? It's Crouton! It is Crouton! What? All the way here? Okay, that's. I'm going to try and process that. It is crouton. So this was before the cat flew through the ceiling. Are we gonna? Is is the cat a mecha cat? Is it like a robot cat that flies? It's the same cat as here. The cat 
and the monkey and the old man, the ditch man, are. I think they're all interlinked. Okay, let's try. Let's give this a go. Well, she didn't look happy. Don't touch the ball. <laughs> Suppose you think you can come in here with your soft little hands and touch on my magic ball. Don't work like that, love. Now I've got to clean off the smudges. I see you've been eating french fries. Greasy hands. Nasty. You must be one of them super duck people. Always coming around here, looking down at their cell phones. Greasy hands, terrible. The app said I should come here. The app? Yes, ma'am. Something not right about you. You a drug head? I'm sorry, is this the right place? It is, but our hands. It is. Just calm down, love. You made it. Dallas will tell you... Tell you what's what. Go talk to Dallas. I called him when I heard you trying to break into the place. Hell of a racket you're making. <laughs> trying to break into the place. Just knocked on the front door. And someone opened the door. Jiggling on the handle like you couldn't get a hold of it. Now I see why. Dallas will be right out front. I don't got time to be babysitting you. Now that I've got to clean up. Now that I've got to clean up all this. Stains all over my ball. You even check your shoes before you came in? They're clean. My shoes are clean. Well, I know that's a lie. And one last thing. That gemstone you got hanging from your neck. That thing ain't real. I know. Trashy. What's going on? We've got Troy, the director, and then Rosie. Everyone's just horrible. Everyone's just horrible. I said don't touch my ball, love. This is going to be a long night. Oh, who's this? Dallas. Right, okay. So this is the person that's been called. Perfect. Okay, guys. I think that's a pretty good place to, to end episode two here. We've been running for just over an hour now. Um, so, fantastic. Um, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Um, I'll be whacking out another one of these um, within the next week or so. Um, and, uh, yeah. Thank you for watching.